the first algorithm we're going to look into is KNN or K nearest neighbors. How KNN works is basically given a data point, you calculate this data point's distance from all other data points in your data set. And then you get the closest K point. So this K is a hyperparameter that the user determines. And in regression to get the results, you get the average of the values of the K nearest neighbors. Or in classification, you get the label of this data point using the majority vote of the K nearest neighbors. So maybe let's see this on an example. Let's say the green values that we have here are one group and the red values that we see here are another group. And then we have a new data point, the yellow point. What we do is we get the distance of the yellow point to all other data points in our data sets. We get the K closest ones. So let's say for this example, it's three. And in this case, this is a classification. So we get the majority vote, all of them are green. That means this point also needs to be green. So let's see how we can implement this algorithm in Python. All right, let's start building the Canon algorithm. So I'm going to make it into a class actually. And in the initialization function, what I need to pass it is of course self. And this is a K nearest neighbors algorithm and the K is going to be determined when the model is created. So that's why I'm also going to have to pass it a K value. Uh, for now, we can say the default value for k is 3, and then we create k. And this class is going to have a fit function and a predict function. In the fit function, we don't really need to do much. Basically, uh, what we have to do is to keep the values for the x and y data sets. And of course, I also need to pass it here to the fit function. And then the predict function is where we're going to do all the calculations. So calculating the distance between this data point and all the other data points and finding the closest ones and then getting the prediction for that. To the predict function, we're going to be passing the testing data set. So the data points that we want the prediction for. So what I'm going to do is actually to create a helper function, another predict function, that will get a single data point value. And here what I'm going to do is to say the predictions will be self the helper function for each of the examples in the data set that is being sent to us. And then I can return these predictions. And here in this helper function, I'm going to calculate the distance of this little x, so one single data point, uh, to all the points in our x train, and then return the label uh, based on the three nearest neighbors. The main thing that I need to do here is to compute the distances, and then I need to get the closest k. Uh, close and finally we need to determine the label with majority vote. So to compute the distance I'm going to be using Euclidean distance so uh, let's create a, oh, I don't know where this came from, uh, but let's create a Euclidean distance um, global function that given two arrays will give us a distance between them. And numpy square root numpy sum of x1, x2. Of course, I also need to import numpy for this. Distance, and then I can return the distance. So here I'm going to calculate the distances. And the distance is going to be between this x that is passed, uh, passed to this function and each value in x train. But this is self x train, of course. From here, I'm going to use arcsort from NumPy on top of the distances. And after it's sorted, I'm going to get the first K 
uh, of these distances of, of their indices at least. What ArcSort does is basically tells you where the original uh, indices of uh, f from the previous array, from the uh, original array, would be after they are sorted. So then when you get the first K, uh, effectively, you're gain, getting the indices of the closest three neighbors for this uh, data point that we're working with. So that would give me the indices. And then I will get their labels. Nearest labels. And we can get that from Y train for E in the closest indices. To get the most common class label, I'm going to use from the collections library a counter data structure. Oops. It's just going to make it a bit easier for us. I can get the K nearest labels and then I can ask for the most common one. And basically all I need to do is to return this most common label. So let's see if everything works as intended now. I've already imported the Iris data set from uh, sklearn, from scikit-learn. And let's see what the data set looks like first. All right, so this is what the data set look, looks like. It looks like there are three separate clusters of uh, labels. And uh, the next thing that I want to do is to create a classifier. I'll close this uh, with KNN, but of course I need to import KNN here since I just created it uh, from KNN. We import KNN. And what we need to pass it is the K value. Uh, let's say, okay, let's say five for now. Then we call the fit function over the X train and Y train. And then we need to do predictions. Uh, why then we send it the X test and that would give me some predictions. Uh, but let's see what these predictions look like first. All right, so this is one result. This is one prediction that we get. Uh, as you rem you might remember, we are getting it from the counter, the most common function. And what it returns is a list of the counts of all instances and uh, yeah so how many times it has occurred and what the name of this label is so instead of that of course we need to return only the name of the label and nothing else so that's why i'm going to have to select the first one and the first value inside this tuple also and that is going to give me the labels so let's run this again and see Okay, now it looks like it's giving me actual labels. It's either zero, one, or two. And now I also want to calculate its accuracy to see if it's working well or not. And that is actually quite easy to do. I'll just say accuracy, count how many times predictions are the same as Y test, and divide this by number of data points in Y test. And then we can print this. Let's see, 0 0.96. So that's pretty good already for something that we implemented in like, what, 10 minutes or something like that. So that's great. That means our KNN is working. Don't forget that you can get this code through our GitHub repository. The link is in the description. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next lesson.